Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. An Oakland County woman says she lost her life savings, hundreds of thousands of dollars to a scam. Tonight, she's speaking openly about what happened in hopes of helping other people avoid it. Thanks for being here with us for the News at 6. I'm Kimberly Gill. And I'm Devin Skillian. This is easily one of the biggest lottery scams on which we've ever reported. A Troy senior, Kathleen Tipp, out roughly $700,000 after thieves made her think she had won much more than that. She just spoke with our consumer investigator, Hank Winchester. Hank, you've met a lot of scam victims. There's understandably a sense of wounded pride that keeps most of them from go going on camera, and we understand that to talk about it. But this is not the case with Kathleen, and we appreciate her coming forward with her story. Kimberly Devin, we certainly do. As you can imagine, she's embarrassed by what happened, but she does not want this to happen to you. And in all of my years in covering scams and talking to victims, I've never heard a story like this one. What has this done to you? It's devastated me. Are you kidding me? Kathleen Tipp has trouble believing it really happened. Sitting in her Troy condo, she's surrounded by a pile of receipts, copies of checks, Reminders of the thousands of dollars she lost to a high-tech thief. He kept, even just this morning, he texted me. He did again? He did, and the detective this morning said, don't have any more communication with him. Last fall, she got the call many of us dream about, or so she thought. She was told that she'd won the Publishers Clearinghouse Grand Prize. But in order to get the big winnings, she needed to pay up. It started with a small request, $500 needed to send her all the paperwork, handle all the legal logistics. But as the weeks dragged on, the dollar amounts got higher. The request even more bizarre. Yes, she sent the thieves a high-end watch, diamonds, and more. Oh, Rolex watch and a diamond bracelet. And the idea there was that you, again, you were told if you buy the jewelry. They're going to sell it, make a profit. It'll go towards the prize. So as I'm putting this story together today, I think I'm thinking what you might be thinking at home. How in the world did this woman fall for this? I would never fall for a scam like that. But here's the deal. These scammers, they prey on seniors. They use emotion. They make them believe if they don't do everything they say, they're going to be in big trouble. I get it. A police investigation now underway, but the scammer is likely long gone. On to the next victim. Kathleen doesn't want that person to be you. And before all of this happened, Kathleen and her husband, they were enjoying retirement, really not a big financial care. She's 74, and at this point in her life, she says she has to find a job because she's worried about paying the bills. We're live here tonight. Hank Winchester, My help me, Hank. Goodness, Back to you. This is just heartbreaking. Yeah. Hank, I'm, I'm wondering, though, when you, you, those checks, it looks like they were drawn on this from the same bank. The, the, was there not a red flag when she kept going to the bank to get these big checks? I am so glad you asked that question because it's the question I asked, and it's part of the scam. She told her banker and her financial planner that she was now involved in a startup company and that's why she had to keep getting the money uh, out of the bank. Oh, boy. Oh, just awful. Mm. So yeah, sorry. Yeah. But again, I'm so glad that she shared her story. Maybe it helps somebody. Yeah. Hank, we appreciate it. Just awful. There is a legal battle underway involving the iconic logo of one of Detroit's best-known companies, Better Made Potato Chips. Better Made, those snacks often handed out to trick-or-treating children on Halloween, sees too many similarities between its logo and the one used for marijuana products called Better Smoke. Sean Lay, live with a look at this new lawsuit. Sean. One thing, Devin, is if you think about the Better Made, made logo, you at home, think about it right now, you know it's in your brain. We all know what it looks like. It's an iconic logo here in Detroit. Now, we're here at King of Buds, one of the cannabis companies here. This is just one of several businesses named in a lawsuit for branding some of the cannabis like this, Better Smoke Premium Cannabis. That looks like the Better Made. It looks like the entire bag, actually. Better Made says it has to protect its logo. It's suing. 
Detroit's better made potato chips are the popular pure Detroit chip through quality of its snacks and making those snacks in Detroit. Better made has been a big part of the city for years. Better made building up its brand, its loyal customers over time. And that's not an easy thing for a business to do. Just a few weeks ago, local force Kim DeGiulio was inside the better made chip making facility on Gratiot Avenue, where longtime employee Phil Guzmano spoke about better made meaning great snacks, but better made also meaning a lot to Detroit. We've been in the city of Detroit since 1930, and we're very proud of that. 70% of our employees live within a, a, a five mile radius of us. A big part of that brand is the iconic Better Made logo. It is unique, recognizable, and one of the cool things about our city. When something reaches that level of iconic cool, there are many who will want to piggyback off of that. Wednesday, Better Made said no more filing a federal lawsuit against a long list of dispensaries who borrowed the better name logo to use for some of its cannabis products packaging. King of Bud's dispensary in Ferndale is just one on this list of businesses that Better Made says took a version of its logo to use as their own to sell their products. Better Made is arguing those are clear trademark violations. After alerting these cannabis businesses that they were not authorized to use the Better Made logo, the chip company says it got no response. And now the company is not just looking to get their logo back to mean great tasting chips, but also seeking financial relief when the cannabis companies were given months to stop using the logo. All right, back here live. This is a lawsuit is extremely interesting. It's a good read. It's on our website. Click on Detroit.com. It's a federal lawsuit. You can read it all there. We checked with some of the companies here. No comment. And Better Made also said they're not going to talk about pending legislation, guys. Very interesting case, though, because the, those bags here and in other places look a lot like the Better Made bags. And now I want to go get some chips on the way home, guys. There you go. Of Better course. Made. Yep. You know it. All right, yeah. Sean. Delicious. <laughs> All right, tonight rescue operations have been suspended at the collapsed Francis Scott Key Bridge. So far, the bodies of two of the six construction workers who died after that cargo ship crash have been recovered. Now we're getting a look at new video of what happened moments before the collapse. We're now moving from a recovery mode to a salvage operation. Colonel Roland Butler from Maryland State Police saying Wednesday evening, recovery efforts for four people presumed dead after Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsed in the frigid Patapsco River are put on hold. Because of the superstructure surrounding what we believe are the vehicles and the amount of concrete and debris, divers are no longer able, able to safely navigate or operate around that. New traffic cam video showing what happened moments before that collapse. The data recorder was recovered from the ship Tuesday. National Transportation Safety Board investigators learning alarms went off 45 minutes after the ship left the terminal. The pilot sending a mayday call to shut down traffic. Within two minutes of that call, the ship collided into the bridge column, causing it to collapse, and the eight construction workers on top of that bridge not evacuated in time. With dozens of ships headed toward the port now needing to be diverted, the focus is now to rebuild. The reality is that for all those jobs and for all the commerce uh, that goes uh, through the Port of Baltimore, uh, opening that channel uh, is the priority. The collapse of the Key Bridge is a global crisis. The national economy and the world's economy depends on the Port of Baltimore. But extreme weather conditions are making recovery efforts for this disaster tough. I mean, it's cold. It's cold water. It's raining and uh, you have current uh, and all sorts of um, uh, waterway challenges. And the cost of insurance claims is expected to reach somewhere between one and three billion dollars. University of Michigan is buying more than seven acres of land at the site of the former Kmart headquarters in Troy for a price of four point forty two million dollars. Michigan Medicine plans to build a multi-specialty facility on the property with a stated goal of expanding clinical services and increasing patient access across Oakland County. They plan to break ground for the facility next year and open it in 2027. But finally, something at a very famous address in the Detroit Metro. All right, March Madness moves to the Sweet 16 tonight, unfortunately without the Golden Grizzlies. Came so close to being there after that epic win against Kentucky that turned Jack Golke into a March Madness legend. Yeah, it's been an absolute whirlwind, man. Everything's been 
been crazy, things getting thrown at me, like media opportunities and, and uh, just kids coming up, taking pictures everywhere I go and stuff like that is really cool and I feel very lucky to have uh, been in that situation. Are you at the stage where you're like, man, that was awesome or are you still like, ah, we came so close, we could have hit another. Yeah, it's, it's kind of back and forth, to be honest. Like, there's there's times where it's like, oh, that was a terrific run. I'm super glad everything that happened. And then there's times where you kind of get those night tears of, of, oh, if we would have made this one shot, if we would have gotten this steal or this rebound. It is a splendid kind of torture, of course, for Jack Golke, a fifth-year player coming off the bench for a 13th-seeded school that most Americans probably thought was in California. But three, after three, after three, put Golke and Oakland on the map and into the pages of March Madness lore. I definitely prefer coming, you're right, like out from underneath yeah, and yeah. turning back kind of towards the middle. Toward the middle. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But there's no point in being in there. No, there's no reason <laughs> to do that. That's a waste of time for sure. Now, Jack Golke should be easy to guard. Look at this shot chart of his entire season. He is, well, a specialist. You, uh, no doubt, have seen the shot sheet that yes. ESPN yeah. has developed. <laughs> the shot chart is crazy. <laughs> shot. Well, go ahead. Your yeah, own I mean, take on your own it's, shot it's, chart. It's so funny because looking at it, it, it it's obviously very one-dimensional, and, and my teammates always give me so much crap about it because they're just saying, like, you can't shoot twos, you don't ever shoot layups, and, and I try to tell them, I said, I, I used to be a little more well-rounded. I used to shoot some twos here and there, and they don't believe me. They, <laughs> they say, I need to pull up some film, and I, I've yet to find some for them, so, <laughs> so I'm going to have to dig into the archives. But even knowing his address, Kentucky couldn't seem to find him, and when all was said and done, he'd made 10 three-pointers, second most ever in tournament history, and it helped Oakland pull off one of the all-time upsets. And Oakland with a March memory of a lifetime. Oakland came up just short, losing in overtime in their second round game against North Carolina State, though Golke added another six threes. And it hurts, but no matter what, they'll always have Kentucky. Usually I don't notice the crowd, but by the second half I noticed every time I caught the ball, the, the air kind of rose in the arena, and I had never felt anything like that before. So I was kind of just trying to soak that in because that was really awesome. That's really great. Yeah, it was And it's cool. smart that you knew to lean into it yeah. instead of, you know, fear it. Exactly, because right. it's just one of those situations that, I mean, probably is never going to happen again. Wow. Probably. I, I just got chills when I you know. described how the air just kind of rose. Wasn't that great? Them. I love that. <laughs> uh, Jax says the reaction, of course, has been overwhelming already in IL deals from the likes of oh, Buffalo Wild Wings and great. TurboTax. But I, we need to be quick to note, Oakland, and Jack will tell you this, was not a one-man show. So of many course. players coming through in the clutch and so inspiring to all of us in true Greg Campy fashion. Yeah, it was just fantastic yeah. to watch him play and so happy for him. Life-changing. I love spending time with yeah, him. He is like just a such a great guy. I loved it. Yeah. yeah.